That is not normal. Hey guys, welcome to another video today with me, Dr. Austin. Now, we're gonna go over guitar bridges today, and I had David write me up a list of guitar bridges, but I don't think he realized what kind of bridge I meant. Anyways, let's get into the video. First, let's go over the anatomy of the bridge and what it's for. So here we have the bridge, and on top is the saddle where the strings rest and stay level. And sometimes there's a tail piece right here, which holds the strings by the tail end, keeping them taut. So that way the whole thing works together. The bridge also transmits the vibration from the strings, sending that signal to the pickups. There are a few different types of bridges. We have hardtail, floating, and a couple specialty bridges. First, let's get into the hardtail. But first, a little bit of history. The first hardtail bridge was introduced by Rickenbacker in 1931 on what they called the frying pan. With all hardtail bridges, it's designed to stay on the guitar, securely in place, keeping the strings rock solid. These types of bridges have the easiest time changing strings and tuning. The hardtail bridge comes in a variety of different shapes and sizes. For instance, this one, the Tunematic Bridge. The Tunematic Bridge was introduced by Gibson in 1953 and looks like this. We have the bridge itself with, like I said, the saddle on top holding the strings, and this tailpiece here, which looks like this little metal bar, with, and it looks like it has two eyeballs. The next iteration of hardtail bridges we have is the through the body. So as you can see here, it's got the same type of bridge with the saddle holding the strings on top, but no tailpiece. It goes through the body here and it's held in the back on the ball end of the strings with this little frowny face. But this is not a sad guitar because this is my favorite guitar we have in the store because I love these. Next up in the hardtail lineup, we have the Telecaster type bridge. So what this one is, is it's this big frying pan looking deal and it still does have everything I talked about before. It has the saddle right here on each string, keeping each string level individually. It's a very Fender-esque looking bridge, but it's, right now it's on this Aria Nashville guitar. Next up is this wild contraption known as the Archtop Bridge, which is the actual closest we'll get to crossing bridges like David insisted. Found exclusively on hollow body and semi-hollow body guitars, this bridge, unlike our other bridges we were talking about, cannot screw into the guitar because it's hollow. So it has this floating part here, but it's still stuck in place, just like how a hardtail bridge should be. Uh, but it also has the bridge here and the saddle, just the tailpiece is not screwed in. There's a few other types of hardtail bridges I didn't quite get into today, but those are the ones I could get to. Guitars will come with different types of hardtail bridges like these, whether it's for look, sound, or feel. So hopefully this helps you determine if you like this type of style of bridge. Now let's get into some floating bridges. The main difference between a hardtail bridge and a floating bridge is that the floating bridge is not held in place like the hardtail bridges. It's actually floating so it can move up and down. I don't have a floating bridge guitar on me. Hang on, one second, I know where I can get one. Thanks, Max. What happened? Thanks to Max, I can now show off this floating bridge. So the floating bridge, as you can see, kind of still looks like a hardtail. It still has the saddle, string still in the same place, but the difference is I have this whammy bar. The whammy bar directly affects the position of the bridge going up and down. The reason people like this is because it makes cool noises like this. The method behind this madness are these springs in the back here. So check this out. I'll push down on the whammy bar, making the bridge go up, and you'll see the springs expand. And when I come back down, the springs will contract. Now, this is all awesome, but the only downside is that if you use the whammy bar too much, you run the risk of knocking yourself out of tune, and you don't want that to happen in the middle of a show. But that's a great segue into some specialty bridges. Introducing the Floyd Rose. So basically the story behind this is one guy named Floyd Rose got really tired of his guitar falling out of tune, so he worked tirelessly to make this system. The Floyd Rose still works just the same as the floating bridge system, with a few extra steps. So it has two locking systems, a locking system down here, which you can see in the back here with these parts, and a locking system up here on the neck with three bolts keeping the strings in place. The benefit of this is that you can go absolutely crazy on the whammy system and not fall out of tune at all. The only thing I feel that you should be aware of is that it is a bit trickier to change strings and set up the guitar with the Floyd Rose system. So I prescribe watching a few videos on how to do this before attempting. Now for the moment I've been waiting for, an up and coming bridge known as the Evertune system. Now the Evertune, at first glance, looks like a hardtail bridge. It's stuck to the body. But what makes this bridge special is there is a whole mechanism in here keeping the guitar constantly in tune. I am not joking. It's nearly impossible to knock this thing out of tune. And there's no batteries, there's no electronics involved. It's all mechanical and everything from tuning to action to even intonation is all set by this one Evertune key right here. 
And once you have it all set up, it will not fall out of tune until you need to change your strings again. Now you must be asking yourself, but then what about the tuning pegs? Do they not matter anymore? They still do because technically, if you really wanted to, you could knock yourself out of tune. You just have to turn the peg like a hundred times. Now I can adjust the tuning peg just a little bit and it still will not fall out of tune. I have tested this. I can get seven full rotations up or down. I'm still fully in tune. Any further than that though, I could run the risk of going sharp or flat. It's like having a big green zone that's in tune and then two small little red zones that are out of tune. Now there is a myth going on with this bridge that you can't bend, but yes, you can. So what you do is you have the big green zone. What you wanna do is get the string to the top where the red zone is and then go back to the top of the green zone and then you will get, gain the ability to bend. If you're lower in the green zone, then you will constantly have the same note and bends won't happen. But that is your bend territory up there. Now, this bridge does not come stock on most guitars. However, there are some brands that do, like for instance, LTD here did put stock on this. We did not get this specially done. However, if you like this bridge or like the sound of it at least, and you want that surgery done to put it onto yours, you, have, you must take it to a specialist. As you can see here, it's a big, big surgery. It goes all the way through the back of the guitar here. There are a lot of other factors when buying a new guitar, but hopefully this helps you understand the bridges a bit more. So in summary, if you want to mess around with the whammy bar and have fun with those string noises, then go with the floating bridge. However, if you don't really care about the whammy bar and you want just stability, go with the hardtail. But if you want to stay in tune for the rest of your life and you don't mind spending a little extra money, go with the Evertune. So today we learned that bridges are not just for crossing, they're for guitars too. Now if you want to try any of these guitars or any of the bridges I showed off today, they are all in our store and you can try them out as long as you want, however you want, and if you have any questions, we can totally help you out with that too. Now, I should actually put these guitars back in the store, so I'm gonna try this again. David's not around, so he shouldn't screw this up for me. And... Oh, I should have remembered to write down Golden Gate Bridge on Austin's list. Ah! What the heck, where, where are we? Is this the Golden Gate Bridge? Yeah!